Welcome to My Safety Training Online presents Ergonomic Office Safety. This workshop has been designed as an introduction to the basic principles of ergonomics in the office. It targets the workers, supervisors, and managers that are exposed to ergonomic risks in the office environment. What you will learn. We'll talk about how, a, how to identify health considerations that apply to the office environment, evaluate a workstation, understand and consider computer monitor selection criteria, consider additional controls for cumulative trauma, use the computer monitor selection and setup checklist, then we'll summarize it and quiz you. Well, hey there, partner. I'm rooting, tooting, raw here. I'm ready to help you blast your way through this program, so hang on to your shark, partner. <laughs> Section 1, Introduction to Ergonomic Office Safety and Health. Here's your first first group project. In 60 seconds, list as many sources of noise in your office as you can in the next 60 seconds. Remember, equipment noise can be disruptive, annoying, or distracting. As a result, ambient sound levels should be kept as close to 55 decibels as possible on the A scale. There are at least six steps you can take to reduce operator fatigue on computer stations. Name as many as you can in the next few minutes. Eye exams should be conducted to assure early detection and correction of poor vision. Ongoing complaints indicate the need for prompt and complete eye examinations. To ensure that prescribed corrective lenses provide sufficient range of focus for computer monitor work, Tell the examining ophthalmologist or opt optimist that the employee's work involves using a computer monitor. When a computer vi user visits an ophthalm optometrist who is prescribing your eyewear for reading, the operator needs to inform the eye care specialist of the distance between the eyes and the computer monitor. I were prescribed for reading a book versus viewing a computer monitor may vary due to different focal distances. The distance can easily be measured by taking a piece of string and measuring from the bridge of the nose to the screen. Graduated bifocals may not work because the focal point of the corrected distance to the monitor may cause you to tilt your head back. Psychosocial issues. issues. User-friendly software and adequate operator training are critical to a successful introduction. Training and orientation may be helpful, but a person's response to change depends on whether change is perceived as positive or negative. If computers and or monitors are introduced in a way that fails to meet the needs of both the job and the users to prevent elevated levels of stress and anxiety, you must ensure the communication between workers and supervisors involves workers. Although concern about on-the-job hazards related to computer monitor use during pregnancy has increased as more women of childbearing age enter the workforce, there is insufficient evidence available to support the assumption that exposure to electrical, ma electrical magnetic fields may cause birth defects and miscarriages. The following references are provided so that women of childbearing age who use computer monitors routinely at work and their employees can study the research. Computer monitor Monitors and the Risk of Spontaneous Abortion by NIOSH in the New England Journal of Medicine. Section 2, 
Section 2, Evaluating the Workplace Ergonomically. Evaluating a workplace. The work area should be large enough to accommodate the operator, allow a full, full range of movements involving the performing of the task, and have room enough for equipment and materials to make up a workstation. An effective work area should be limited to the convenient reach of the operator. Here we can see uh, equipment and or materials found inside the small arc or the light blue are tilted toward the operator. These are high use items. Medium use items are located inside the second arch, dark blue, and are shifted toward at 18 degrees. An environment with a high illumination washes out images on a computer monitor because it produces its own illumination and contrast. For this reason, a computer monitor work areas should have a lower light level than the standard office areas. For these areas, illumination ranges between 30 to 50 foot candles for screen viewing and 50 to 70 foot candles when reading printed documents. Adjustable lamps may be needed to provide supplemental light for reading printed documents. To control direct glare and reflected glare sources, the walls, furniture, and other equipment located near the VDT should not have high reflective finishes. Walls can be painted with non-reflective subdued color paint to reduce glare. Windows should have adjustable drapes and the computer monitor work area should be located away from and at a right angle to windows. Light fixtures should be equipped with diffusers, cable louvers, and parabolic louvers which are located near the computer monitor. Recessed or indirect lighting systems eliminate glare and reflections but are not suitable for all workplaces. To reduce glare and reflection from overhead lights, place the computer monitor work area between rows of over overhead lights. Screen glare filters should be used as a last resort since they can contribute to blurring and poor contrast of screen characters. Operator responsiveness has been mixed and nylon mesh filters preferred over glass or plexi filters. Using sc screen filters is a supplementary solution and not a substitute for proper lighting. Temperature and humidity. Set the room temperature controls to maintain thermal comfort with sufficient cooling and ventilation. Avoid overcrowding the, vid the VDT's work areas by providing a fairly constant relative humidity around 30 to 60 percent is recommended. Section 3, Planning and Problem Solving. When selecting a display screen, characters should not have a perceptible flicker or waver. Geometric designs of letters and symbols should not be distorted or appear to melt together. Screens which swivel horizontally and tilt or elevate vertically enable the operator to adjust for viewing angle. Mounting a video display monitor on an adjustable arm which allows movement in all directions is the most efficient way to build an adjustability and free, uh, free up the workstation space. The light adapted eye is most sensitive to light in the green part of the color spectrum and it's for this reason it is often recommended that the color of the characters fall within the green yellow part of the spectrum. In practice, however, the character color is secondary to the need for adequate contrast and clarity of the display. Regular screen cleaning is necessary to maintain the clarity of characters. Eyes in relation to the keys, when adjusting the screen height, the top most line of the display 
should be at or slightly below the user's line of vision. Here we can see a visual depiction of the proper viewing distance. The viewing distance between the user's eyes and the screen should be between 16 and 29 inches when the neck is in a neutral position. Bifocal users will position the monitor at the lowest point of the work surface. Okay, let's try to simplify our previous screen as, with some quick, quick questions. The screen should have user controls per character blank and blank. The blank character color is secondary to the need for adequate blank and blank. When adjusting the screen height, the topmost line of the display should be blank. The viewing distance between the user's eyes and the screen should be between blank and blank inches when the neck is in a neutral position. Choose a keyboard which is detached from the screen display and allows the independent angle adjustment and positioning. The keyboard should have a thin profile to, maintain, to minimize wrist deviation. Keys should provide tactile and audible feedback. A removable keyboard with an angle adjustment of 0 to 25 degrees will allow for arranging the keyboard to suit the task and physical needs of the operator. A matte finish keyboard surface reduces reflections, easing the operator's eye strain. A keyboard fitted with a wrist support on the heels of the operator's hand minimizes both hand contact and sharp table edges. Wrist pads thickness should not exceed the height of the first row of the keys of the keyboard. The arms in relation to the keyboard. When the operator's hands are resting on the keyboard, the upper arm and forearm should form a right angle, or 90 degrees. The hand should be reasonably straight with the forearms. Take a minute now and underline the following key points in the text above. The keyboard should have a thin profile to minimize wrist deviation. A movable keyboard with a keyboard with a tilt adjustment of 0 to 25 degrees will allow for arranging the keyboard to suit the task and the physical needs of the operator. A keyboard fitted with a wrist rest support supports the hand the heel of the operator's hand. The document holder should be stable and adjustable for height, distance and angle of viewing. Here are the key features. The holder fully supports the document and can be used on either side of the monitor. And the document holder should be at the same distance from the eyes as the computer monitor to avoid frequent changes of focus. The holder is next to and at the same height as the display screen so the operator can look from one to the other without moving the neck or back. It is essential for the chair to be properly designed for comfort, efficiency, and ta the task being performed. A chair must not only fit the person, but also the requirements for the task and the environment in which it is being used. When this is determined, consider the individual dimensions before selecting the chair. Here are a few of the key factors in selecting a chair. Stability. Choose a chair that has good stability, a five-point base. Seat. An ideal seat pan length allows three to three and a half inches from the front edge of the seat to the back of the lower leg of the knee when the back contest contacts the backrest. The seat pan should not exceed 17 inches or the front edge of the seat will press against the back of the, le of the legs and cause discomfort. This will force the operator to sit forward in the seat out of contact with the back backrest. For most people, a seat pan with a length less than 13 inches will not give adequate support under the thighs, causing the weight load to be shifted to other tissues, which will lead to discomfort during long periods of sitting. Ideally, the chair height should be adjusted first and then the workstation adjusted. 
In reality, however, the work surface height often cannot be adjusted. The chair height needs to be adjusted upward until the upper arm and forearm are at 90 degree angle with the work surface. A footrest can be added as needed to compensate for the increased chair seat height. Hard, unpadded, flat seat pants are uncomfortable for periods of, of an hour. This causes tension in the hip and muscles and becomes uncomfortable. The seat pan contour supports the lower back contact with the backrest. The front edge of the seat pan should have a softly padded rounded front edge with a waterfall edge. Straight and unpadded seat pan front, front edges compress thigh tissues restricting blood circulation. This causes pain and legs may fall asleep. Seat covering materials should be porous and breathable, but not slippery. The operator may slide away from the backrest, providing little back support. The key here is that the padded seat contour should promote lower back contact with the backrest and have a rounded front edge. Backrests need 15 to 20 inches high support surface, about 13 inches wide, and contour to the curve of the lower back. The backrest should be large enough to support the entire back, including the lumbar region. However, it shouldn't be so large that it interferes with the use of the arms during the performance of the assigned task. It is preferable to have a chair with armrests that can be adjusted to the height of the individual for the task being performed. Armrests should be low and short enough to fit the chair under the work surface. And armrests that are too high elevate the shoulders causing stiffness and pain in the shoulder and neck muscles. The most comfortable armrests are long enough to support the full arm at the base of the hand. Select a stable terminal table. A work table with an adjustable surface and separate adjustable keyboard is recommended. If a mouse is used, then the adjustable shelf should be accommodate the mouse and the keyboard. The table surface height should be adjustable from 23 to 28 inches. The table surface height should be adjustable to 23 to 28 inches. Adjustable work tables and keyboards allow for different operators and a variety of tasks to be performed. If a fixed height work table is used, the table surface and keyboard should be separate. If the table surface is about 29 inches high, the keyboard surface should be about 27 inches high. The terminal table should have at least sufficient leg room so there are no obstructions for the knees, legs, or shins, or thighs. The minimum depth, depth for knee space is 15 inches at knee level and 23 and a half inches at toe level. The minimum width for knee space is 20 inches. If an operator's feet do not rest completely on the floor once the chair height has been adjusted, a foot rest should be provided. Footrest can be adjustable to the inclination, not leg movement, and be easy to remove. A footrest should be large enough to support the soles of both feet and have no more than 30 degrees inclination. The top of the footrest should be covered with a non-skid material to reduce slippage. Section 4. Additional Controls for Cumulative Trauma Okay, Root and Tootin' Roy is going to help you introduce you to some computer-related health problems. And we'll see what we can do to make them effective solutions. Problem. Back pain is one of the most common VDT computer user complaints. A back is a very complex structure and back problems can result from several sources. A chair that falls supports the lumbar region of the spine 
is a common cause of back discomfort because up to 35% more pressure can be placed on the lower back when sitting. The normal adjustment of the spine, if viewed from the side, is an S-shaped curve with an inward curve at the neck and an outward curve at the middle of the back and an inward curve at the lower back. When the chair does not provide adequate lumbar support, the lower curve of the back flattens and this is called lumbar lordosis. When the sitting process is completed, the hip actually rotates backward, flattening the curve of the lower back. This causes spinal discs to stretch from the vertebrae, causing discomfort. A chair that provides good lower back support can maintain normal alignment of the lower spine, relieving fatigue and discomfort. Problem. A straight back chair provides little or no support to the lower and upper back. Sitting in this type of chair causes back muscle fatigue as a result of muscular efforts to maintain the, the back posture for a long period of time. The solution is a large tiltable backrest which allows the users to change positions, reducing muscular effort and fatigue from sitting. A slight backward recline also helps to reduce the flattening of the lower spine when sitting. Problem. When chairs are too soft, users sink into the seat pan. This restricts the movement and causes thigh, buttocks, and lower back fatigue. Conversely, when chairs are too hard, users will need to change postures frequently to relieve thigh and buttocks discomfort. Solution? People spend much of their time at work sitting. And this is especially true of computer operators. Consult with the operator of the ch for the chair choice that is best suited for them. Problem. When a display monitor is too low, it causes the operators to lean forward, slouch down, or lower the chair to improve their viewing display monitor. This causes the lower curve of the back to flatten because of lack of lumbar support. The solution is to raise the monitor so the top line of the character display is just below eye level. Problem. The monitor is too high or too low causing hyperextension or forward flexion of the neck. Screens which swivel horizontally or tilt and elevate vertically allow the user to select the optimum viewing angle. Monitoring a video display monitor on an adjustable arm allows movement in all directions and is the most efficient way to create adjustability along with the freeing up, up of the workstation. Problem. Documents placed flat and off the side of the work surface cause forward flexion rotation of the neck. An articulated document holder or document holder mounted on the video display monitor positioned at the same elevation as the screen should relieve this problem. A document holder should be capable of being used on either side of the monitor. If the user's hands don't form a straight line with the forearms, or if the straight edge of the work surface presses against the palms, wrist, or forearms, hands, and forearm problems can occur. The problem is that the keyboard is too thick, causing wrist deviation. Purchase thin keyboards to minimize wrist deviation with a keyboard fitted with a palm rest supporting the heel of the operator's hand and wrist deviation. Problem. 
Using the foot rungs of the chair as foot rest can produce excessive knee flexing. Operators usually put their feet on the rungs because the feet cannot rest squarely on the floor. Solution? Provide a foot rest. Computer work consisting of a combination of static posture coupled with repetitive motions results in local muscle fatigue. Take frequent bakes of shorter duration every hour on the hour. Change job tasks. This reduces fatigue and monotony from stressful tasks. Section 5. Computer Monitor Selection and Setup Checklist. If your height of your work surface is adjustable, 23 to 28 inches, the width of the work surface should be 30 inches. If the viewing distance is 16 to 29 inches for focusing at close range, the thickness of the work surface should be 1 inch. Your eyes in relation to the screen. The topmost line of display should not be higher than the user's eyes. Here we can see an example of a computer monitor selection and setup checklist with an adjust height of your work surface an adjustable 23 to 28 inches. The width of the work surface 30 inches, the viewing distance 16 to 29 inches, and the thickness of the work surface 1 inch. Here we can see a recommended computer setup with the seat height an adjustable 20, 16 to 20 inches, the seat slope an adjustable 0 to 10 degrees, the backrest 15 to 20 inches high and 13 inches wide, the height of the backrest is an adjustable 3 to 6 inches, and the tilt is an adjustable 15 degrees. The angle between the backrest and the seat should be 90 to 105 degrees. The angle between the seat and lower leg should be 60 to 100 degrees. The angle between the upper arm and forearm in relation to the keyboard means a 90 degree angle. Hands should be reasonably straight in line with the forearm. Here we can see a recommended computer setup with a seat pan depth of 13 to 17 inches and 17 to 20 inches wide, a knee room width of 20 inches minimum, non-adjustable work surfaces of 29 inches high, with a keyboard surface of height about 27 inches. Screens must be readable with no perceptible flicker and the brightness control is necessary. The blink rate should be no more than two different blink rates at least 2 hertz apart. Cables and cords should kept concealed, covered, or out of the way. Glare control. The computer monitor is placed at right angles to windows and have tilt and swivel adjustments. Use lighting levels at 30 to 50 candle foot when, the, cause, when using the monitor and 50 to 70 foot candles when documents are read. Fatigue control. Encourage good operator posture, body and eye exercises, rest pauses, and job rotation. Or do substitution of less demanding tasks. When having vision problem, evaluate the operators who may need glasses or wear bifocals. Psychosocial issues. Include the operator in the selection process. Encourage communication between operators and supervisors. Summary and pop quiz for office ergonomics.
I were prescribed for reading a book versus viewing a computer monitor may vary due to different focal distances. This distance can be easily measured by taking a piece of string and measure it from the bridge of the nose to the screen. An environment with a high illumination washes out images on a computer monitor and may produce its own illumination and contrast. The work area should be large enough to accommodate the operator, allowing for a full range of motions involved in performing the tasks. Windows should be adjustable, have adjustable drapes, and the computer monitor work area should be located away from and at right angles to the windows. A matte finished keyboard surface reduces reflections and eases the operator strain. It is essential for the chair to be properly designed for comfort, efficiency, and the task being performed. For most people, a seat pan with a length of less than 13 inches will not give adequate support under the thighs. The viewing distance should be 16 to 29 inches for the focusing at close range and the thickness of the work surface at 1 inch. Thanks for participating from the gentle folks of MySafetyTrainingOnline.com. For more information, see OSHA.gov eTools.